So anybody can post anything on YouTube and that's great because then you can learn almost anything on YouTube for free. And a lot of us have learned to shoot photography and video here on YouTube, but it can also be a bad thing because anybody can post anything on YouTube. And that can lead to some of us learning bad habits and then having to unlearn those bad habits. And one of the bad habits that tends to come about a lot is shooting with wide open aperture all the time. And it's pretty common to hear people talk about nice prime lenses with super wide apertures and getting the best bokeh, but you shouldn't be shooting wide open, or at least not all the time. And I'm gonna talk about why. So first I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons people use to argue for shooting with a wide open aperture. And the first is obviously blurring out the background. And people argue that you can use this to eliminate busy backgrounds and make a bad location look better. And I'm not going to say that this isn't useful sometimes. And sometimes you just have to get a shot and you have to make it look good. And Sometimes you have no control over the setting, you don't have enough time to make the background look better, and you just have to get the shot and it has to be good. And blurring out the background to make a bad shot look good is necessary sometimes. But if your entire body of work consists of making a bad shot look good by shooting with an open aperture, you might need to take the time to work on your skills as a photographer. So you could try working on your composition, framing the shot to be less busy, or try finding locations that have less busyness in the background. You could also work on using lighting differently and using natural light and finding better natural light to make more interest on your subject or give more character and interest in the background, even if it is maybe a busier background or make it less prominent. And you can do that with natural light or working with strobes and speed lights or even constant lights as well and using the lighting to give more interest or make the shot more interesting. And the next thing is bokeh. And I get it, bokeh looks cool, but no one's looking at your shot for the bokeh. If the bokeh adds something to your shot, then great. But if the only good thing about your shot is the bokeh, that's not great. And really, it just comes down to understanding depth of field here because you can still get good looking bokeh without having to shoot at wide open apertures all the time. And if you're still wanting to get that blurry background, you can experiment with changing the distance between your subject and the background as well as your lens to your subject. You can experiment with using different focal lengths. So maybe shooting something more telephoto versus shooting something more wide angle. But not every background needs to be bokeh out. Sometimes having the background and the environment and the context in a shot is a good thing. And sometimes it's the reason for the shot in the first place. And then people say that they need to shoot wide open because they shoot in low light. And this one's actually pretty confusing to me because how is it that you're able to afford a bunch of f1.2 prime lenses but you can't afford a camera that can shoot at 10,000 ISO without having destroyed the image quality. I mean, unless you have like an older generation of APS-C or micro four thirds camera as your only camera body, it's not gonna be an issue. And the thing is a better image with a little more noise is still a better image, but modern cameras can handle shooting in low light. So that's not even a problem and shouldn't be an issue at all with a decently modern camera. And that's across all brands. And also, and this may be a whole nother video, but just learn to light your shots. And then uh, another argument that I still hear a lot of people say for shooting wide open all the time is that, well, that's my style. And this part might sound a little bit harsh, but I was there too and said that that was my style as well at some point, but here's the thing. If you started shooting that way because everybody on YouTube and social media was doing that and you've never shot any other way, that's not a style, that's you following an internet trend. A style and an aesthetic is probably something that you don't have because developing a style comes from 
trying and experimenting and doing different things, shooting different ways and shooting in different scenarios. And it's something that you have to grow and develop and it should shift and develop over time as well, even once you've developed a style and aesthetic. And if you've never done that, then again, you probably don't have a style. But seeing someone else's posts and trying to shoot like that definitely isn't a style. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that you're missing out on if you're only shooting wide open aperture all the time. And the first thing that you are literally missing out on is detail in your shot, detail in your subjects. And I mean, just quickly, briefly, very simplified overview, depth of field is the relative size of the area in your shot that is going to be reasonably in focus. And a shallower depth of field literally means that more of your shot is going to be out of focus. The bokeh and the out of focus in the background can look cool, I get that, but it doesn't only affect your background, that also means that less of your subject is going to be in focus. And it's hard to get all of a subject in focus at something like f1.2. And you see this in things, for instance, if you're like shooting portraits on an 85 millimeter f1.2 at f1.2, where one of the eyes is in focus and one of the eyes is out of focus, even if they're really close to being on the same plane of focus. And that's something where I have heard people say, well, if part of the face falls out of focus, then it's going to cover up imperfections because there's less detail in the imperfections in the face. But I don't find that an effective way to cover up imperfections if that's what you're trying to do in skin. And the thing is in the end, especially if you're doing paid work, typically if someone's paying you to take a portrait of them or a loved one, they want to be able to see the person's face and not just see one eye of the person. Trying to cover up skin imperfections that way, I don't think it's super effective and it can kind of distort the face of the person. And going back to style, maybe shooting portraits wide open at large apertures is how you like portraits to look, but if you've never shot at different apertures, how do you know? If you've never shot a portrait at f11 or f16 or f22, how do you know that you don't like how those portraits look better? Maybe it'll work out better to have skin imperfections covered a little bit with less detail from the diffraction while your subject is actually still in focus. Another thing you might be missing out with blurred backgrounds all the time is the context of the shot. Where is it? What's going on? Why are you taking the shot? Sometimes the purpose of the shot is the surroundings and the environment that it's in. And Again, this is another chance to work on things like composition and framing and a good background and environment can make a subject that's maybe a little boring more interesting. Another thing you might be missing out on is the subtleties in the lighting of your shot. And let's not forget that photography and video is recording light. Light is what makes our shots. Again, with a shallow depth of field, you only have one small area that's in focus and so you're only really getting the detail of what the lighting is doing in that one small area. And in the rest of your shot, you're not getting the detail in light fading and contrasting and different ways that light can play throughout your shot. And even on the subject, if it's not completely in focus. Now, of course, it's not going to negate the lighting in your shot, but it can diminish the effect that the lighting has on your shot. And maybe sometimes if it's bad lighting, that might be what you want. But if you're always shooting wide open to always kind of negate or diminish the effect of the bad lighting in a shot, again, it's probably time to start working on lighting your shots. And in the end, really, you're just missing out on getting better with your shots. If you're not trying new things and experimenting and using different framing and composition and techniques and shooting at different apertures, if you're not doing anything other than shooting different variations of a half blurry subject, you're not progressing and you're not getting better and that means you're stuck. And if it were me, and again, it was, and I was shooting that same way over and over, 
my work would get boring, even to me, and it did. And here's the thing, what do you have to lose? Just try shooting with a stop-down smaller aperture and experiment and see how it goes. It doesn't mean you have to commit to never shooting with wide open aperture again. I still do that sometimes. And it could even mean that you, in the end, like shots with a super wide open aperture all the time better. That's fine, but you can't know that if you don't experiment and try other things. And Maybe you'll learn something or add some new technique to your shot and maybe you'll experiment and find out that you like something better than the way you're doing it now. And in the end, you could master shooting with smaller apertures and then decide you never want to shoot with small apertures again and go back to shooting wide open all the time. That's fine, but experiment and try and find out and see what works for you. And again, work on developing your own style and aesthetic. But Anyway, that's all I had to say about that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this video. Do you agree? Have you gone through that transition of shooting wide open all the time to trying to shoot with smaller apertures? Or are you on the other side and you've shot with smaller apertures and never want to go back to anything below f1.4 again? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. If you're looking to purchase any gear, I didn't really talk about gear in this video, but I'll have affiliate links for some of the stuff that I use and some of the stuff that I like to recommend in the description down below. If you purchase through those affiliate links at no extra cost for you, it'll help support this channel so that I can continue making videos for you guys. Thanks, see ya. You gotta focus on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah.